Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting Gnome versus Elf, and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Pinot Noir. And if you do enjoy this video, I encourage you to like and subscribe to my channel, and to also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, cobalt blue, fire red, deep yellow, green oxide, and Mars black. And of course you can switch up those colors a little bit if you'd like. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number nine round brush and I have a number five round brush. And throughout the painting process, I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large. And of course you can switch those up as well. And if you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying them. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the paint and the brushes and all that good stuff. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a, a picture of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are going to be painting our sky. We're gonna be using our large bristle brush and the colors that we're using are brown, blue, and white. I'm gonna have mine pretty dark at the top and a little bit lighter down at the bottom, but before I paint it, I do wanna give myself kind of a horizon line. So I'm gonna put all three colors on my brush at the same time, a little blue, a little brown, and a little white. And I'm gonna mark my canvas about two thirds of the way down. So to figure out where that is, you can kind of visually pick your halfway point. Then you can go about halfway between those two and then it's somewhere in the middle of there. So I just mark it and you could go through that process on the other side or you can use your brush as a measuring tool and then just go over to the other side, give yourself a little mark and then you can just give yourself some kind of uneven line. It does. I, I want mine to almost look like little piles of snow. So just something uneven will work. And then I'm just gonna pick up some brown and blue to start. I want my sky to be pretty dark at the top, not like it's nighttime, but definitely like it's got some winter atmospheric dimension in it. And I'm using a long kind of crisscross type brush stroke to get the paint on. As I come down, I'll be incorporating more white, so it's gonna get lighter and lighter as it comes down. And then when I get down to the bottom bottom, I might use a little bit more brown. So it almost is a little bit warmer at that um, horizon line. But you can see, I'm just kind of using a nice light, kind of crisscrossy type brush stroke, and it's gonna give it almost like maybe there's some clouds floating by or just some nice, nice winter time dimension to it. So you could have yours more blue, you could have yours more warm with the brown, whatever color is really kind of speaking to you, feel free to do it. I love using the brown on steps like this. Whenever I'm doing any kind of nature, I always think of neutral kind of colors. That's where my visual preference lies. So you'll find that a lot of my paintings, I will incorporate brown when, when one's mind would just tell you blue. <laughs> so I really do, I like to, you know, add these different colors to, to the painting process and it gives it, you know, just a, a nice unique look that sometimes can, can create an individual 
style for an artist. So you can certainly feel free to get these tones to be whatever you want them to be. Have fun with this. I am getting mine to be just a, you know, a kind of a neutral winter type of a color. I'm gonna put a little bit more brown at the bottom here. That's gonna really give it that nice warmth as it's hitting the earth. And then I'm just gonna go all the way across. And I will be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your entire sky painting painted, you can wash and dry this large brush. As soon as I get mine done, I will do the same. <laughs> I'm almost done. Sometimes, you know, you just kind of fiddle until you really think that you've got it exactly the way that you want. And I think that's good for me. So I'm gonna wash and dry my large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the ground, the snow on the ground. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using the same colors that I used for my sky. So I'm using brown, blue, and white. And this time I'm gonna be using a circular brush stroke and I'm gonna have it darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. So I'm gonna start with all three colors, a little bit of all three colors on my brush and I'm just gonna start with a circular type of brush stroke. Now maybe I'm gonna pick up some blue. Next time maybe I pick up a little bit of brown. So at the bottom, I'm kind of using a carefree alternating of colors on my brush just to get this bottom section on because I want there to be some, you know, maybe more earthy tones into it with the brown and then maybe some more bluer tones with the blue so it can show cold and earth at the same time. And then as I work my way up, I'm going to be picking up white paint without washing my brush. So by the time I get to the top of the snow, I'm gonna be pretty darn white, if not 100% white on my brush. So at this point, I'm not picking up anything else other than white. And what's gonna happen is those darker tones are gonna work their way off of my brush. And you can see I'm, at times I'm going back down into the previous section because I don't want it to look like lines of color sections. I really want them to, to look like they belong together. And I'm not using a ton of paint on my brush so I can kind of control where I'm dispersing it to or where it's blending into. Sometimes when you um, do a step like this, if if you're not planning on washing your brush in between colors, if you pick up a whole bunch of paint, like a, a real big scoop, what might end up happen, happening is you blend it all into one color. So if you can kind of control yourself, especially in the darker areas, to not using a lot of paint, you'll be able to control that as a blend going up as opposed to um, merging it all to one color. But when you get to the tippy top, where you want it to be the brightest white snow, now you can pick up a good amount of paint to get those really bright parts at the, at the tippy tippy top. And if by the time you get to the top, you're not seeing bright white, if you still have a lot of those, of the blue and the brown on your brush, you may want to consider washing your brush. So that way, you can get these pops of the bright, bright white stuff at the top. And I'm going right into my sky, I'm, and I want this edge to be really kind of messy, so that way it looks like there's little piles of snow here and there. And then once I've got that on, now I'm just gonna kind of look, look it over and make sure that I've got the transition the way that I want. We still are gonna have additional details to the snow, but this is, this is the, the main coat that we're gonna be putting on it. So you'll wanna get it to your liking at this point. And then we are gonna be switching to our pencil for the next step. So once you've got your snow on your ground, you can put your large brush away, take out your pencil, and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are drawing an outline for our elf. So we'll be using our pencil to do so. But I do wanna kind of forewarn you that before you attempt to do this step, you do wanna make sure that your canvas is dry. So it might already be by now, but if it's not, you can certainly take an extra long break if you'd like to. 
or you could blow on it. Ho, ho, ho. That might take you all day though. Or you could just grab a blow dryer and blow dry it. So whatever means you would like to do to get your canvas dry, feel free to do so. Um, so how we're gonna do this, I'm just gonna take you through a series of shapes and hopefully by the time we're done, we'll have something that resembles an elf pulling on a candy cane. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down about halfway midpoint in my canvas and I'm gonna go over to the right. So I'm gonna make myself a marker that's about a third of the way over from the right and about halfway down my canvas. And I'm just giving you a ballpark. Yours doesn't have to be exactly like this, but, and it's all gonna look a little bit different if your, um, if your snow is piled higher than mine or lower than mine. So I, I'm just gonna kind of put the elf here. I think it'll balance well on the canvas. Then I'm gonna go, uh, in a diagonal fashion, maybe about two, two and a half inches, just down a little bit, make myself another marker, and then I'm gonna connect these two. This is gonna be our elf's belt, and it's kind of like a center point for the elf, and then we can kind of build everything off of that. So I'm gonna bring a little vertical line up like this, a little, and they don't have to be exactly vertical because they can have a little bit of movement to it, and then I'm just gonna bring it down like this. So this is about a quarter of an inch thick. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a rectangle that's going to be going in this direction. I, this is going to be the main area for his body. So I'm going to bring it, maybe I would say, if this is the top of your canvas and this is where your belt is, it's if this is the halfway, it's maybe a little bit below that and kind of maybe about two inches away from the edge of your canvas. So something like that. And then I'm just gonna make it go that way and that way. So you're just looking for a rectangle right now. And then I'm gonna make a oval for the head and the oval is gonna be tipped a little bit like this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it come into my rectangle just a little bit. And as it comes this way, it's gonna come a little bit past this corner so a little bit maybe to here. And elves can come in different shapes. So if yours does not end up looking exactly like mine, don't worry about it. We can certainly have a different shape elf from one another that works in the elf world. And then I'm gonna make a little cute, little bump out for the little elf nose somewhere in through here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a little elf ear so this is going to come a little bit as high if not a little bit higher than my the top of my head so something like this it's going to come down about here it almost looks like an up my my elf ear it looks like an upside down kind of um teardrop but yours might look a little bit different than mine it's all up to you then i'm going to make the the top part of my little elf hat so i'm going to have a little fluffy white piece so it's going to sit right on top of the the head like this and then i'm going to make my elf hat's going to come bumping over and it's going to come way down to maybe about the mid back so if you wanted to you could actually make yourself a little like pom-pom thing about well maybe here or a little bit lower however i think i'm going to make mine a little lower so it looks really long so about halfway something like that and then i can bring this is gonna be the bottom part of my hat. I'm gonna bring it to the, the back. This is all gonna be hat in through here. And then something like this. And it's gonna be a big bump up here. And again, yours might look a whole bunch different than mine, but that's gonna be a generic shape that I'm gonna do for my hat. Then what I'm gonna do, I gotta put myself on some arms. So my shoulder is right here. My candy cane is gonna be somewhere over here. So I don't want my arms to look like super long noodly things. So I wanna try and keep them in proportion So with, with the body. So I always think when I'm doing something like this, what, what are my proportions? So if I take my arm, my arm, my wrist comes down farther than my waist or about near my waist. So that's about as long, if I was to take my shoulder to like the waist, that's about, as long as I want it. It's just kind of a good thought 
to, to do it that way. You could make it longer or shorter if you want, but that's gonna kind of be where my, where my head goes. So what I'm gonna do, this is gonna be my shoulder. I'm just gonna kind of imagine it's gonna come this way. I'm not making a fancy arm here. I'm just gonna make something, let's see if I was gonna go this long. So maybe something about here, and then I'm gonna make myself a little bump where the mitten is gonna go, and then I'm just gonna bring this back like this, and then I need to bring part on the other side as well, because there's because he has two arms. So something like that, and the other one would be on the other side. I know it looks a little funky right now, but we're just giving shapes. <laughs> when we paint it in, we'll, we'll, we'll give it form at that point. So that's gonna be all I'm gonna do for that part. Now I gotta put on some legs here. So what I'm gonna do for the legs, I want him to look like he's, you know, leaning back and, and trying to muscle muscle with the gnome with the candy cane so how i'm going to do this is from here i'm going to do the front part of the leg and if this is the diagonal from here i'm going to put the leg just a little bit more and i'm really just kind of doing a straight ish line right now you can certainly finagle it a little bit when at when we're putting the clothes on and stuff but right now i'm just kind of getting it on here and i'm putting it maybe about a third of the way to halfway down my snow. And then I'm gonna go in the middle of my legs and I'm gonna come down just, or in the middle of my belt, come down maybe about an inch and a half or so. This is gonna be the inside of my leg. And again, you could have your straight, you could, I gave it a little bit of a thigh and a little bit of a, um, a calf muscle, but you don't have to do that. You could just have your straight. Then I'm gonna have the other leg is gonna be like bent like this. So uh, from this part, I'm gonna come down to about where I've got my inset, my knee part there. And then I'm just gonna bring it down in this direction. And it's gonna go past my belt. So something like this. And again, you gotta kind of keep it in a similar length. And then I want it to have a little bit of a rear end. So I'm gonna put something like this. And again, we can. it will look much different when we put the color on. So that's gonna be the knee. Maybe there's a little bit of a calf muscle and then it meets the ankle. So I'm gonna have cute little elf shoes. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna put like a little U in through here, like they're a little boot. And then I'm gonna put this like here. This one is gonna come down like this and it's gonna me, it, this one's going to be the, the back foot, obviously, but it's going to come up like this. And of course, you can make whatever kind of elf shoes that you want. And the same thing on this side, I'm going to put a little U, like it's one, a cute little boot. And this one's going to be more kind of grounded in the snow, almost more flat. So I'm going to have it similar like this. And again, you want them pretty kind of the same similar size, but they can certainly be in a different direction because the foot is look in a different direction. You know, one of them is perched a little bit with the heel up and this one is just kind of flat footed. So you can certainly, and of course when we paint them, we will add a little bit more detail to them. And then I just need little fringes on my, on my elf shirt. So I'm gonna just add as many as I want. I think I'm gonna have some going down like this. You can have as many as you want. Just have fun with it. Put them in whatever kind of way that you want them to be. Maybe something like this, and then maybe I've got one, something like that. And the only thing that, last thing that I'm gonna do is I want this rectangle to look a little bit um, rounder. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna round this shoulder a little bit, something like that, and I'm gonna give him a little bit of an elf belly something like that. That's all we're gonna do for our outline for our elf. We're gonna use this same tool for the next step so you can just take a break and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the outline for our gnome. I'm gonna be using my pencil and similar to how we did our elf, I'm just, we're gonna do some shapes and hopefully by the time we're done, we've got something that is as cute as cute as can be.
But wait, he's not gonna be as cute as he will be when we paint him. This is just gonna get us started. So again, I'm gonna start with kind of a, a basic line and then we'll build everything off of that. And the line I'm gonna start with is gonna be the bottom of his gnome clothes, his dress, his robe, I'm not quite sure what gnomes wear, but this is his coat, I don't know, his cloak, I don't know. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come in maybe about two and a half inches from the left-hand side and I'm up about four, four inches or so. I'm gonna make myself a mark there. And then if this is my halfway point, I'm over to the left just a little bit and maybe at about the height of the knee for the um, for the elf, that's my second dot. This is gonna be the bottom part of his garb, so you can just make a wiggly line. It doesn't have to be anything other than a wiggle line. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to about the waist height of my elf and come over here in from here, maybe about an inch and a half or two inches and I'm gonna connect this to here. This is gonna be the outside of his, um, of his clothing, so something like that. I'm gonna bring this diagonal and to make the exterior. This doesn't have to be anything other than a diagonal line because you're gonna be covering it with his beard and I want it to come shy of this, so it should be to the right of this. So somewhere maybe, maybe about here. And then again, I'm gonna just make myself a nice wiggly line to meet that. So something like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be making the area where his, where his head is gonna go, but there's, we're not really gonna put many details on it right now. All I know is I want the hat part, the, the, the brim of the hat where his eyes and his nose are gonna go to be about the same height as the shoulders of my elf. So if I come kind of over from the shoulders, that's about where the front brim is gonna um, be for my, for my elf, or for my gnome. So since it's about there, I'm gonna come a little bit to the left of here and just kind of make myself an uh, uneven line going from there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come about halfway down this line and over to the left, somewhere about here, and just kind of make a line there. I'm gonna make the bottom brim of the hat. So I'm going to be coming something like this, and then I'm gonna do a big drop, a big dip in through here. And then I'm gonna do a little dip over in through here. Something like that. And then I am going to be putting a ball for his nose somewhere in through here. Just a little tiny space between the nose and the hat is gonna be where we'll put the eyes later on. And then I want my, I want the edge of my hat to be a little bit farther than the edge of this clothes just to give it movement as, as the gnome is kind of leaning back a little bit. So if your edge is not farther than this, you can always measure it, you can take like your, pencil and do this. So mine is not farther. So I wanna, I wanna bring that up just a little bit, even if you just bring it down just a little bit. Now I'm gonna make myself a wiggly hat. So my hat is, I'm gonna have the, the end of it is gonna be up, up in this vicinity somewhere. And I'm not giving you real exact pointers on the hat because they're all gonna end up a little bit different from whenever, from each other because they're all just wiggly hats but I do want, you know, an area for the head to be in here. So I think I'm gonna start maybe somewhere around here, make myself a little bit of a wiggle to here, and then maybe I'll come way up into this vicinity and bring it back down into here. And then somewhere around here, this will be maybe the smallest part of the part on his head. So maybe I'll go something like this. And you can see, I'm just kind of free-forming this. Yours might end up way different than mine. It might end up exactly like mine. We're just having fun. And it's gonna look funner when we have all of his beard and stuff out there as well. So now I'm gonna put on a couple of legs. I'm gonna come into about halfway into the um, 
bottom edge here and I'm going to give myself a diagonal line, something like this. And I'm going to go to the right of it, make myself another diagonal line. It's maybe about an inch and a half to two inches. I'm going to put myself on a really fun, I don't know, round kind of shoe. <laughs> You can make up your own gnome shoes. They all they come in different shapes and sizes and colors. <laughs> it's a whole lot of, of fun when you start researching gnomes on the internet <laughs> to see what they're supposed to be wearing. Then I'm going to give myself a little bit of a knee, something like this, because this is the other leg. And this is going to come somewhere in through here. Maybe this one is coming out of the clothing. This foot is going to be um, kind of tipped up like it's pulling away. It's trying to brace itself. Give myself a little bubble just like that one for the toe and then bring it back up like this. You know, and again, you just want the shoes to look like they belong together. And then I got to put some kind of an arm on. So I, again, I'm going to come somewhere in this vicinity where the, the clothes is going to meet the head. And I know that my um, well, your, your, your candy cane can really be in different angles, but for me, I'm going to have mine kind of come in like this, and it's going to be coming down at a diagonal. So I'm going to have my arms sticking out somewhere about here. And again, I'm going to just have a little mitten on it, so I'll just put a little mitten, something like that, and bring it back in here, and then I'll have another little sliver to indicate that there's another arm in through there. And that's all I'm going to do for my outline for the gnome. So we are going to be switching brushes to our medium brush for the next step. So you can put your pencil down, take a break, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are going to paint the clothing, the first layer of the clothing on the elf. So the colors that I'm going to be using are red, green, black, and white and blue. So red, green, black, white, and blue. How I'm going to do this is I'm going to do red first. So I'm going to be painting the first layer of my pants or the first step to my pants, which is just the base coat so of my pants is going to be red paint. You could certainly use any color that you would like. I just felt like my elf is going to have some red pants on for his tug of war match with the gnome. So that's the color I'm choosing to use, but if you wanna do a different color, feel free to do some. And I'm using pretty heavy paint. Um, I do know that I'm gonna be having another step to the clothing where I'm gonna be doing highlights and shadows to it. So if I don't get perfect coverage on this step, I'm totally okay with that. Cause again, I know that I will have that additional step to it. And again, I'm just going to be doing red for my pants. I'm going to do red for my hat. So while I have the red on my brush, I just gave him an extra big knee, but that's all right. Something like that. I'm going to do, oh, I got this little spot in through here. Don't want to miss that. I'm going to do red for my hat. So I have the white fluffy part on the hat that I'm going to leave that unpainted right now. And I have a little, little bump on his ear that you might have a, a section there that's the ear, you might not. Maybe yours doesn't come as high as mine did, but if it did, you'll wanna, you'll wanna go around it. Um, but if you paint it over it, you can, you can certainly fix that as well. I am, like I said, I'm using a good amount of paint. I'm using my medium brush to get this layer on here. And I'm just trying to be mindful that I don't paint over my other outlines, but I am going all the way to my pencil mark. So you can certainly, if you did something that you want to adjust a little bit, now's the time that you can certainly make it bigger if you need to or make any little adjustments to it. And then I'm going to be using green for my next color so I'm just going to quickly wash and dry my brush and the thing the clothing items that I'm doing green are going to be my cute little boots so I'm just doing a, a a solid color for them at this point I will be adding all my little details 
in a future step. So this is just, again, adding or providing us with a nice base coat for these for these individual pieces of clothing or or shoes, I guess. Elf shoes, elf boots, elf shoes. I'm, I'm really hoping that these um, foot, these, these, you know, shoes that we're putting on them have good traction <laughs> in the snow because they are really putting with all their might. They're pulling with all their might. I'm going to do his shirt green as well. So I am just going to go ahead and add my my green here and if you're if your red is still wet on those pants and if you're a little nervous painting around you could certainly go ahead and paint the other areas of the shirt first and again i'm just using a good thick coat of green to get this on so it's probably going to be a little streaky for you during this um initial coat simply because acrylic paint has a tendency to not cover 100% on that first layer. So if it ends up being a little bit streaky, don't worry about it. We will we will handle that in the, the next time we go to, um, to do the second layer on it. And you will probably see your pencil marks underneath as well. So that is totally fine because the pencil mark is going to provide you with some guidance and especially around the arms and around the face and stuff like that. So it's all right if you can still see your pencil marks at this point. And if you want to adjust his shape, like I really like that little belly in through there. So I'm gonna just make sure that doesn't go away. And again, I'm just doing a nice solid coat on here. Gonna put some sleeves on his shirt. And again, I'm really not terribly concerned about the dimension or anything like that at this point. Just gonna give it a nice solid coat. I'm gonna give him his his green on his mittens. And then I'm gonna do uh, wash and dry my brush real quick to put black on his belt. And then we just have one other little piece to do for his clothing. So belt is just getting some some black paint and this will override any, gr any wet green if it goes through it. And we're gonna do this like this. I don't know about you, but I totally wish that I could see the end of this story here. The elf versus the little gnome, hmm. I'm, I don't know, the elf totally has the height advantage here, but the gnome has a good lower center of gravity, so I don't know. So I said I was gonna use blue and white. I'm actually using blue and white for um, my, my little white pieces on my hat. So I'm gonna just put so a, a light coat of blue and white like this. This is gonna be my little base coat for this. I'll put a, a bright fluffier layer on later, but this is just gonna be my bright, or my first coat of the fluffy stuff on his hat. I like doing these in a, in a two-tone kind of way so they uh, look even fluffier and three-dimensional. So that's gonna be my first step on it. And then we're actually gonna switch back to the pencil for the next step. So once you've got your first layer on your, Cute elf's clothes. You can uh, put your medium brush away, take out your pencil, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are outlining our candy cane. So I'm gonna be using my pencil, and I just need to make it look like it makes sense. So it's gotta go between their hands, right? So I'm gonna have the hook part the elf, the elf gets the hook, <laughs> which is gonna obviously give him a little bit more advantage. And the straight part has to come through the gnome's hands. So I'm gonna have mine kind of going in this direction. So I'm gonna really just kind of start mid air in through here, a little bit away from the elf's hands and just give myself kind of a really, diagonal line that makes sense. It's gonna go through my elf hand, maybe something, I just modified it a little bit here, through my elf hand, something like this. It's gonna cross over into his, into his dress thing, maybe about that far, and then it's gonna come. I've got mine probably about an, a half of an inch wide. You could certainly, if you're working on a different canvas, you could have yours a little bit different of a size if you want to. And then I'm just traveling up 
the other side and now I've got to start to curve it so I want mine to I want this to look like it's the front part of his of his mitten so I'm gonna get it to curve right in just so it bumps out just a little bit and then this is gonna curve back around something like this and you can see I'm just sketching nice and slow I'm gonna have the end of the candy cane like this and I want it about the same width as here so maybe about a, a half of an inch wide and then I'm just gonna travel along this curve and keep it about that half of an inch wide jump over here on this side and then just connect it to here and then we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your candy cane in place, you can put your pencil away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of the clothing on our gnome. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm using are black, red, brown, and white. And how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have the the hat and the main, I wish I knew what to call this, the main dress part, a really dark, deep, like reddish color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take red and I'm gonna add a little bit of black to it. I'm not gonna use all of my red because I certainly need some bright red for some stuff later on, but I'm really making myself a nice, dark, rich red. And it's like a dark maroon kind of color. And I'm gonna use this color to paint this entire dress area or cloak or sweater or <laughs> <laughs> I should have totally looked that up before. I don't know, they all, we are all different kinds of, this is his winter attire. So whatever it is, it can be, it can be a dress, it can be a jacket, it can be a sweater, whatever the official garb for, for gnomes is. I'm gonna watch out for my candy cane here. Just going right around that. And again, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a perfect coat of paint because we're gonna be doing another step to it. So this is just getting us a nice primer coat on here. And go right up to my little arms in through here where I have this line in through here. This isn't gonna eventually be a broken line, so with the beard and hair coming down. So if you wanna start messing that up right now, that would help for a future step. I'm gonna do his arms and his mittens. I'm gonna lose the other side, but I will know where the separation point is because of where it meets the, the regular body part. And then I'm going to just make sure that I get it all the way up to the candy cane and make sure I cover all of my pencil area here. And if it ends up growing a little bit, that's okay. No big deal. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my hat. I'm gonna have a cute little like gray band in the middle of the hat. So I'm gonna actually separate that with my paint right now. And I'm gonna leave that vacant. I'll paint it the same color that I paint his pants or his tights. I don't know what gnomes wear on their legs. Maybe they're just big socks. I don't know. You can decide on that too. <laughs> There's so many, so many free decisions that you get to make on these kind of super fun paintings. But I do, I still am gonna wanna know who wins this race. So hopefully when I post this painting, everybody can give me their, their thoughts on who they think is going to walk away with this huge candy cane. <laughs> I'm gonna, I don't know. I don't know who to put the money on because again, the, the elf looks like he might have done this before. He looks a little bit more on the athletic side. Maybe he goes to the gym a little bit more than the, elf, than the gnome does. But I'm telling you, I'm thinking that the gnome might have one of those clever sides to him that he knows how to shift his body weight just so, so he can be the, the conqueror of the awesome, the awesome candy that is the prize for them. All right, so I've got those colors on. I'm gonna quickly wash and dry my brush. 
And now what I'm doing is I'm gonna do my pants or my tights, whatever you wanna call those, and this little area up here. So I'm just gonna use a dark gray. So I'm gonna take a little bit of white and mix it in with a little bit of my black. Maybe you want to have brown in yours, totally up to you. So I just put a little bit of brown in mine too. Just some, some dark, warm color that you can use for those pants and for the section on the hat. And then I'm just gonna paint them in, something like this. So no fancy brush stroke, you just wanna get a nice coat on there. Using um, a little bit of the white really helps to get a nice solid coat on here. But again, we're gonna do another step, so if it doesn't get perfect, no worries. Right now we're just kinda of coloring it in like we're coloring in a, a coloring book, which always makes it nice and fun and, you know, kind of an easy type step when you're just coloring in the lines. It can be nice and, and therapeutic just to sit here and dilly-dally and, and get all these little, de you know, the, the simple steps. Now that we've got, we did, in my opinion, I think that we already did the difficult step, which was the outline of these cute beings. Now it's just a matter of coloring them in and getting all the movement onto our painting and, and getting them to really have a good candy cane battle. And then I'm just gonna wash my brush real quick. I got one more thing, which is his shoes. I'm just gonna paint them with black. So I'm just washing my brush real quick. Picking up a little bit of black and I'm just gonna do my first layer of those shoes with black paint, making sure I go all the way to the edge of my pencil mark. And if your shoes grow a little bit in the process, it's okay because, you know, there's all kinds of gnome shoes out there. And there's, so there's garden gnomes, I think, and there's winter gnomes. And I think those are the only two kind I know. I don't even know where they originate from. I did see a lot of beer drinking gnomes when I was doing my gnome research. So maybe they come from a country that drinks a lot of beer which I've been to a couple of those countries, <laughs> but I don't know if that's where these little guys originate from. They're probably some fairy tale story that started the whole gnome thing, but I'm glad that they got, you know, carried into the holidays because I get to paint this fun painting now. All right, so we are going to be, let's see, we're gonna use this same brush, the medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your clothes on your gnome, you can wash and dry the medium brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer on our candy cane. So I'm gonna use my medium brush and I'm just gonna paint it in white. So this is a really nice, easy step. You will be bumping into and painting over your pencil outline. So because I chose to use a regular pencil, what you will see if you also use just a regular leaded pencil, the pencil, the lead from the pencil will bleed into your paint. Let it happen, because <laughs> we're gonna be putting shadows along the edges of our candy cane anyways. So don't worry about it. If it turns your white a little gray around the edges, just let it happen. No big deal. That, that, that will only enhance the look of your candy cane. So you can see I'm going a little slow because I just wanna make sure that I've got it in in my, in, that I'm staying within my lines. And then as I get into this larger area, I might go a little bit faster, but I'm using a good amount of paint and I'm just making sure that I get, go all the way to my pencil marks. And if I need to do a little adjusting here and there, so be it. And I have a shaky hand. So what I do to brace myself is I will, I will push my hand on the canvas that will help to keep my brush nice and sturdy or steady. Um, it, it's just the nature of this beast. When you wanna try and do straight lines, all of a sudden your hand's gonna to start to shake. So I have found many ways in, over the years to help to stabilize my hand. And one of the easiest ways for me is just to rest it on my canvas as I go along. Maybe you rest your pink, pinky, maybe you rest the side of your palm. Mine is always tinged a beautiful color of paint <laughs> as I uh, 
I'm always resting my hand on my canvas. So you can certainly, you know, if you have the same challenges as I do with that, you can certainly do the same. But of course you want the canvas beneath you to be, to be dry when you're resting your hand on it. And then I'm just going to slowly go with the, with the tip of my brush to get these little tiny areas in through here. And really I'm just trying to stay within the lines. I'm not doing anything fancy here. And if I bump into the clothes a little bit or if I go outside the line a little bit, I'm, I'm gonna sleep okay tonight, it'll be fine. I can do any modifications or adjustments that I need afterwards. And then I just got this little piece left. And then as you're wrapping up here, we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer on your candy cane all nice and painted, you'll be able to wash and dry this brush and almost wait for it, wait for it. Get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step, we're doing a really fun step in my opinion, which is to put the uh, first layer on his hair slash beard, on the gnome's hair slash beard. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using black, brown, and white, and I'm gonna pre-mix myself a dark kind of gray, but I think I want it a little bit lighter than this. So if you have some of this left, all you need to do is add a little bit of white and a little bit of brown to it, and that should get you in the right, there is no right or wrong. So that should get you in a similar zone as I'm in. And I do know that it's gonna dry a little bit darker when, uh, when it dries than when, than when it's wet. So if you want to you know, plan for that, just know that when you're, when you're working with gray, it will tend to dry just a smudge darker. So it, whatever you have on here, just know it's gonna be just a little bit darker when it dries. So now that I've got the color that I want, I'm gonna do my exterior pieces of this beard slash hair and then doing the inside is a really easy, just kind of fill in the blank uh, way. So I had you put the body part a little bit in from the hat because for me, I want there to be a lot of movement in this beard or hair. So I want you to be able to see some of the exterior uh, sky throughout it. So I am actually gonna be bringing some of this hair really close to the edge of my hat. So I'm gonna just kind of start by making these like little flick outs from over here. And I'm gonna bring them all the way down to probably about, I would say maybe somewhere in through here. And you can have them going in various directions. And then once I've got that top and the bottom one, now I just make a couple in between just to make them connect. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do down along this edge in through here. So I really need to cover this line, so to speak. So I wanna have my beard hair stuff coming on top of that. So I wanna make sure that I've got enough movement right at that line that it's gonna cover it. And then I just bring some pieces into the clothing. Same thing with underneath this arm. I have to make sure that I don't have any sky showing through. So I'm gonna make sure I've got a couple of pieces there and then I'll maybe I'll bring a couple down in through here too. So again, just adding these little pieces underneath the other things is gonna really add a whole lot of movement to it. Then his nose is gonna kind of ground this side of the face. So I'm gonna have my hair stuff coming just a little bit to the left of the nose because I want the nose to poke out just a little bit. And then I'm gonna bring it down to about here and now I'm gonna just make a whole bunch of little pieces coming out into this direction. So again, I'm just kind of doing the exterior line to the, the hair right now. And then once I've got that exterior line, now I've got the exterior, exterior, exterior. All I really need to do is color in the middle because I know that we're gonna have another step that's gonna add dimension to it. So right now, 
I'm just looking to get have a base coat. So I'm gonna go right up to that hat with this color, bring it all the way over to this left piece, this final, the farthest left piece that I have, and just make sure that I cover this pencil mark that I have in there. So if I still have a couple of little peekaboo spots of the sky, that's great, as long as I can't see my pencil marks. And then once I've got that, then I'm just coloring this in. I gotta hide that edge of the arm to make sure that that looks like the arm is just coming out of the, the hair somewhere, the hair slash beard. I gotta get all the way around that cute little nose. So something like this. And then just make sure your pencil mark is hidden on this right hand side too. I'm bringing it down to my arm in through here. And you could even have a couple little pieces coming over the arm, you know, just at that little edge there, that would be cute. And just making sure I have a nice good coverage in through here. And then just making sure I've got this covered in through here. Maybe I get a little, couple of little pieces, rogue pieces in through there like that. And then let's see, we're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer of your beard on here, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting some skin. <laughs> so we've got skin on our nose and skin on our face and our ear over here. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. I'm gonna make myself an on the fly skin color. So how I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna be using a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of brown, and then some white paint to mix it all together. And one of the kind of my things I do when I'm making a skin color like this is you can use your own skin color as a reference. So, which means all of my things with skin turn out very, very light and pale because <laughs> that's what my skin looks like. Um, but what I do is I will keep tweaking this color until I feel that it looks similar to mine. And how I test it is I will take my, my mixture and I just put the brush right up to my skin and I say, oh, well, that's pretty close. So <laughs> that's what I go with. But you can, you know, maybe yours is a little bit more on the lighter side or on the darker side. Maybe you wanna add more white to it or more brown or more yellow or more red, whatever color you want yours to be. Maybe, maybe the nose is a little bit more pink and you know, whatever works for you is totally fine by me. So I'm gonna take that skin color I'm gonna paint my first layer of my gnome nose. I'm not gonna try and say that three times fast because that will not happen. Gnome nose, no, no, I can't even do it twice. <laughs> Never mind, three times. Okay. Gnome nose, no, no, I can't do it. Gnome nose, gnome nose, nope. <laughs> Nom nose nose. Oh my god, I can't even do it twice. Nom nose nose. Oh my gosh. Nom nose. Nom nose. Oh my god, this is the hardest one I've ever done. Nom nose nose. No, I can't even do it. Nom nose nose. Nom nose, nom nose, nom nose. Slow is fine. It won't happen on the first take, I can tell you that. So I'm gonna do that to my gnome, and then I'm gonna do it over here to my little elf ear. And the ear is just gonna merge into the face, which is gonna merge into the nose, but you, you'll, again, you'll probably still see your pencil marks underneath, which is totally fine. That's gonna, again, help to guide us through the rest of the painting process. So I'm just kind of coloring in my entire head all the way up to my little hat. And then let's see, what are we gonna do for the next step? We, why don't we, let's use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your skin on your elf and your gnome, 
you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the second layer of our clothing for our e.l.f. We're gonna be using our medium brush. The colors I'm using are green, yellow and white, red, yellow and white, and I'll also use a little bit of black. So I'm gonna, in essence, be doing a second layer on these, but I'm adding the highlights and the shadows also. Excuse me. So how I'm gonna tackle this is I'm gonna do my shadows first. So I'm gonna put a little bit of black and red on my brush. I'm gonna do my shadows for my pants first. So I'm gonna have on the bottom right side is where I'm gonna have my shadows. So a little bit of black and red on my brush is gonna go ahead and give me that shadow. I'm gonna do it on the rear end side too. So something like this and I'll have a little bit in through here because this is gonna be shadowed in through there. And I'm using red with the black so the black doesn't overpower, which it can very easily do. So if you use them both together, you have a little bit more control. I wanna put a little bit of shadow in between these pieces of the shirt as well. So just red and black. And now what I'm gonna do, I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up some red just to get it to blend in a little bit with the rest of the pants. And you can see it blends nice while it's still wet, um, but if yours ends up drying a little bit, that's totally fine. I'm gonna do a little bit over here just to make sure that it blends a little bit. And if you go too much, you know, just let it dry a bit and then you can just paint right over it. Now I'm just gonna put more red on my brush just to finish up the kind of a second layer on them. I had just a little bit of black on there, but that's that works out just fine. Red can be very see-through, so as you're going through this process, you'll notice you definitely want to have at least a second coat. Well, I like second coats on everything, but definitely on red. And then what I'll do for my highlights on my pants. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of red, yellow, and white. And the reason why I use yellow with it is because the red and white will tend to make pink, and I don't really wanna have pink pants, so the yellow helps to counteract it. And I'm just putting it on the top side of the, of the pants, something like this, on that like little thigh, or on the knee, that would make sense to put a little bit of a highlight in through there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, while I'm working with the red and the black, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the hat. So I wanna have a big shadow behind the head somewhere in through here. So I'm adding a lot of black and red back behind the head and the ear. So something like this. And you could also put some down here too down this underside of, of the hat, something like that. Get it to blend in a little bit with the, with the regular area of the hat itself. And then I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up some red, and then go ahead and make sure I've got a nice second coat on it. So you'll, you'll catch my pattern in a second here. Once, once I've done one area, I really, pretty much are gonna follow suit as far as the, the process for getting um, all shadows and highlights onto the other areas. Just makes it pretty easy for me to keep it straight in my brain and kind of go through it systematically. Now I've got that red, yellow, and white are gonna be the colors for my highlight for my hat. So if you want it to bump out a little bit, you can put that extra highlight right on those bumps like that. Wipe your brush off on your paper towel. Pick up a little bit of red and then just get these to kind of fade into the hat a little bit. And that's gonna give you a nice bumpy kind of look for the hat. And then just make sure that you've got it all blended as much as you want it to be blended. Maybe up here is a little bit lighter too. 
And then I just make sure I get all my pencil marks covered. I see a little bit of a glare, so sometimes with that glare, it makes it a little difficult for me and you to see. <laughs> so I'll just go ahead and do that. Now I gotta do the shirt and the mittens, so I'm gonna tackle it the same way. I'm gonna do kind of my shadows first. So I'm gonna go green with a little bit of black on my brush, and I know that I want a shadow over on the back, somewhere in through here. I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel, picked up a little bit of green just to make sure that I've got that it blended in with the main area, so something like that. I need a shadow underneath this arm and between the two arms, so again, a little bit of green and black. So my arm is gonna come into the body just a little bit, so something like that. And I'm doing the bottom part of the arm is gonna have a little bit of a shadow on it. In between the arms, I can put a little bit of a shadow, and I'm not really going for any, any ma major detail here, just a little bit to give the illusion that this is in fact, you know, an elf struggling for the candy cane, <laughs> and then maybe I'll just get this to blend in a little bit underneath the armpit in through here. And again, just make sure that you've got all of your paint um, fully covered, a, a second coat. I'm gonna go ahead and put a highlight on the shoulders. So green, yellow, and white are gonna be my highlights. So I definitely want a big highlight over here. And you can cross this over the face a little bit. That'll make it look like the shoulder is up a little bit more and has a little bit more movement to it. So bring that up just a little bit. And then he's got, you know, he's really got his arms stretched out trying to, to get this candy cane. And maybe I'll put a little bit more white on my brush just to get a nice highlight going on the, on the top side of that arm. I need a little highlight on my mittens, so I'm gonna put this kind of across in a diagonal fashion. That'll show where the knuckles are. And if you need to, you know, add any or manipulate your, your mitten a little bit to look a little bit more shapely, you can certainly do that. But I put the highlight where I think the knuckles would be, and that will help me to make that look a little bit more realistic with a little bit of a shadow underneath. I just added a touch of black to my brush. And you know, you'll, you'll kind of, I, I say that I have a, a system, but every now and again, I do float a little bit unintentionally just because I'm like, oh, I forgot, or I, oh, I want to put a shadow there. So now I'm putting a little bit of a highlight on the sleeve of, on the edge of the shirt so you can see the, the sleeve. I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight on the other arm as well. So maybe a little bit in through there just so you can see that there's also a highlight on the other side because it wouldn't make sense to just have one on one side if our light source is in the sky. So you just wanna make sure it all makes sense. And if you need to, you just, you know, go back into that original color. Yeah, that's looking, that's looking pretty good. I see some movement, I see some struggle for the candy cane. I keep adding highlights because I like the highlight to it. And then I gotta do a little bit on his on the bottom of his shirt. So I feel like these would be brighter. So I'm gonna go yellow, green, and white, add a little bit of a highlight on these ones, making sure that they definitely touch the red a little bit or you know come close enough to it. These little edges, put some green back on my brush just to make sure that I've got a good second coat on there that you can't see any of my pencil marks. And then maybe this backside is a little bit darker. I just added a touch more black to my brush to get that in there. And then I think I just need to do my little my little boots. They need their they need their second coat too. So I've got to have a little shadow. So my black and my green is going to place a little shadow in this back like maybe a creasy area by the ankle. I also have a little bit of shadow underneath the boot. So you know, you can certainly make yours as dramatic or as, you know, gentle as you want, totally up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and do the shadow on the other one. So I think I'll have a little bit of shadow, again, where the, the ankle creases in the back. This one, I might have a little shadow in the front too, to indicate that it's like creased as he's, you know, as it's bent a little bit. 
little shadow underneath here. And then this one might be in the snow a little bit. So I might put a little shadow underneath there like that. And then I'm gonna put just regular green on my brush just to, for the base area of the, of the elf shoe or elf boot. And then I'll definitely have to put a little bit of highlight in a second here. So my highlight again is gonna be green, yellow, and white on my brush at the same time. So I'm feeling like there should be a little highlight here, well, maybe a little more white and yellow. A little highlight here, maybe a little highlight along this edge, maybe a little bit there. All along this top side, give it, give it some dimension here. And this one's gonna go maybe right here, maybe right here. Mm, that looks cute. Maybe a little bit in through here. Yeah. Oh, now I'm now I'm skipping around. Sorry. <laughs> I think that's good. All right, so we've got the clothes on our elf. We are going to be using, oh, we need one little, almost, almost, we forgot to finish the fluff on the hat and the little belt buckle. I'm like, there's, so, there's one more thing missing. So just grab some white paint and add a little bit of fluff on top of that dark, the darker original shade that you had. So just a little bit of white, that's gonna add that fluff to the hat and to the little pom-pom at the end. And then I, all I did for my belt buckle is I'm just doing a little bit of white on my brush like this, almost like a little rectangle thing and a little, um, little tie part. That's all I'm gonna do. We're gonna use the same brush for the next step so you can get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing the clothing on our gnome. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are black, red, and white, and maybe a little yellow too. So how I'm gonna do this is very similar to how I did my elf, which I'm, I'm gonna start you know, with a, a section and I'll do my shadows and then the main color and then a highlight. So I think I will start with the pants so I'm gonna put a touch of black on my brush and I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow up at the top and then down that left hand side and then I'll pick up some of my gray and just kind of blend it on in and then maybe I'll do a little bit lighter of a shade of gray for the, um, the if I feel like there should be a highlight part which maybe I feel like there there would be on this one especially. So just adding a little bit of white onto my brush. And the highlight doesn't necessarily have to be all the way to the edge of the um, of that particular leg because the leg might be a little bit round. So if it's round, you might, you know, the highlight might be in the middle of it. I'm gonna put a little highlight on the knee here. So just know that highlights don't always have to be at the edge of things, they can be, um, near the edge, especially on a round type object. And then I'm gonna do a little bit on his shoes. So I'm gonna put some of that gray as like a little highlight that doesn't really need to be a shadow. I'm just doing little streaks of my gray, maybe a little bit of white to add a little, a little sparkle at the top of his shoe to make it look like it's I don't know, moving or something. <laughs> then I'm gonna wash my brush because I wanna do the, um, the red clothing. So I'm gonna use black as my shadow color and then I'll use red as my highlight color. So I want there to be a shadow really kind of all along or all around a lot of this bottom area of this and then maybe up this left hand side and I'm just gonna kind of rub my brush so I have this almost a broken, a broken shadowy area down the bottom so it looks like there's some movement in the fabric. And then once I've got it on there, maybe I'll put a little bit of shadow underneath the, the hair. So I'm just gonna put a couple of little black streaks underneath some of this hair in through here. That's gonna add some cool shadow underneath there. I'm gonna put a little shadow underneath my candy cane on the clothing. So that acts as another dimensional kind of element. And right now I'm just using a little bit of black on my brush. And then once you've got 
your your shadows in place then what I'm gonna do I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up red just red not the dark maroon that we did just red this will act as a great highlight color I know that it will get darker as it dries because of the dark color that's underneath it so the thicker I have it in areas the more vibrant it's gonna be but if it's thin it will show the color underneath it so you can have bright spots and dark spots and it will show movement in that particular piece of fabric so I've got a really bright spot in through here and if I just start almost blending it out and keep that a, a couple of those really vibrant areas it's going to give the illusion that this piece of fabric is in essence kind of rippled in a sense so it's kind of an easy way to get movement into into fabric I'm bringing some of it on top of the black a little bit and you can just tweak it you'll you'll see as it dries it's really it really turns quite different so watch it as it dries and then you might want to even come back and do uh, I'll, you know add another layer to it but that's what I'm going to do for that one I'm going to go ahead and work on the little arms so I'm going to start back with some black to give it a little bit of shadow on the bottom side of the arm and the mitten and then I'll put a little bit of shadow in between those two arms and then I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel I'm going to pick up some red as my highlight and just put that more on the top side of the of these sections and if I feel that it's not bright enough like I might want to add even an even more intense highlight to that um, to like the mitten what I can do is let me just get this other red part over here what I can do is I can add a little bit of yellow and or yellow and white to this red and it'll almost look like a little bit of an orangey color which would definitely appear to be a highlight for red so and if you wanted you could even put a little thumb on there which maybe I should have thought about that before but I I just thought of it on the fly and I wanted to put it there so now my mitten has a thumb um, but you can certainly go ahead and tweak that all you want I'm gonna go ahead and do the hat so again I'm starting with black paint I'm gonna do a shadow underneath the hat later um, whereas this one I put a shadow at the bottom of the um, cloth here I'm not going to put a shadow right here because I want the shadow to be on the hair but I do want a shadow to be along this back side of the hat so I have black on my brush and I can go into the gray part and into the red part with this black and I'm going to treat it like I did oops there goes my brush I'm going to treat it like I did at um in the red section where I can that there's white on my brush now <laughs> it landed in my white paint so let's just let's just cover that with black there we go um, where I can just pull it into the hat a little bit which in various areas which is going to give it that additional movement um, to show you that it dips in or it's you know or it's poofing out a little bit so once I've got it in the areas that I want what I'll do wipe my brush off on my paper towel I'm going to pick up my red paint and I'm going to use my red as my highlight so I definitely want my highlight along the edge of my of my hat and it doesn't have to be a a hundred percent just at the edge you could skip a couple of places if you want to I want some like where that forehead is so definitely a lot in through there and over on this right side of the hat in through here once I've got my highlight on there because this is such a larger area or I want to have more um, shape to it I'm going to go back into that original dark red I just picked it up a little bit so I can make sure that it blends in and I have that concentrated um, bright red for the highlights so something like that while this is still wet and just to ensure also that I have a nice second coat everywhere 
So I've got that, and I've got to tackle that little gray piece on my hat too. So once you've got your shadow and your highlight on the red piece, I am washing my brush to give myself a little bit of fun highlight on here. I want that to look a little bit more like, like a knitted kind of cloth thing. So I'm putting white on my brush. This will be my concentrated highlight area, similar to here. Oops, I just pulled red. Boy, oh boy, let's do that. So maybe it's gonna have a little bit of pink in it. And now that I've got that red on, the red, my goodness gracious. Now that I've got the white on there and I'm drying off my brush because it apparently when I dropped it, I got many colors on it, not just white. So I've got the little areas of white that I want. And now I'm gonna pick up some of that original gray and I'm just kind of doing these really little streaks, almost mark making throughout this section. So it looks maybe like it's knitted or it's got that yarn type look to it, but you can certainly have fun with this and just kind of travel it into that shadow a little bit. And then we are going to be using, we're actually gonna be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your clothing on your gnome, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the outline and the shadows on our elf face. So I'm gonna use my small brush and the colors that I'm using are black and brown. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put just a little bit of brown paint on my brush and I want my brush to be kind of pointy so what I'm doing is I'm taking it and I'm spinning it in the side of my palette so that makes it nice and pointy and I do that almost every time I reload the brush. So I'm gonna make a couple of outlines here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna outline the bottom of my nose. So again, all of our noses are gonna be different shapes. This is, elves come in very unique shapes. So yours can be any shape you want. So I'm gonna go kind of from the tip and I'm just gonna bring it into the face a little bit. And then I'm going to do the bridge of the nose, which is gonna come something like this. And I'm just doing these thin outlines. I just really want to give the, the shape of the nose. We're going to be adding like pink rosiness and stuff. So if your lines are a little bit wider than you want them to be, don't worry about it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to outline my ear. So I'm going to go from this area where it meets the, the head and I'm just gonna kind of give myself a little bit of a line like that. You can outline it all the way, but I'm really just kind of gonna leave a little bit of a space in through there. I'm gonna put a little bit of a dark area in the middle of the ear. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a cute little cheek that's gonna actually end up being the mouth as well. So I'm gonna go pretty close to the edge of my head almost where like my ear is just come down just a little bit to the um, left and lower a little bit and I'm going to give myself a curve that's going to end up hitting the back of the neck then I'm going to give myself a the top of the mouth is going to come from here and I'm going to bring it and curve it just to underneath that nose like that and then I'm going to bring from the end of here and curve it to the back of the mouth like that. And then I'm gonna give myself the, um, the cheek part underneath the eye. So this is gonna be a curved line somewhere up here that it curves down towards the nose, something like that. I'm gonna give myself an outline for the eye. So it's gonna come something like this like that, and then I'm gonna give myself a little bit of an outline over on the other side of the nose for the other eye. So this is just gonna be a little portion, something like that. And then I wanna do a little bit of shadowing at the back of the neck and underneath the hat. So I have brown on my brush right now. I'm gonna pick up a touch of black as well. And I almost wanna make the back of the neck kind of disappear. So I'm gonna start in the hat Make sure I don't have too much paint on my brush, so wipe it off on your paper towel. You can always add more, but it's really tough to take away once it's on there. And then I'm just gonna kind of rub it into the face a little bit. And if you want to or need to, you can certainly 
pick up some of your original skin color to get it to blend a little bit more. I'm just picking up a little bit more of the darkness. I just wanna make sure that I almost kind of hide the line between the hat and the skin, just to give it the illusion that it's almost fading into the dark. And you can even put a little bit down below here too. And again, this is one of those steps might take you a minute to, to, get the, to get the hang of it or get it exactly as you want, but you know, just, just work with it and, and get it, take a minute at it. Now I'm gonna put a little bit more black and brown on my brush and I'm gonna put a shadow underneath my, my cute little hat. So this is gonna be an uneven, I'm just kind of wiggling my brush a little bit. Right underneath it, that's gonna tell the viewer that that piece of fabric above it is has a whole bunch of texture to it. And you just wanna bring it just to the edge of the face because you wouldn't see a shadow out here. Well, maybe I guess you would at the bottom, you, I guess you could at the bottom of the hat. Um, and then if you want, you can bring this shadow down in front of the ear a little bit. And then we are going to be using this same brush. So once you've got your shadows and your outline of your elf face, you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing the gnome face, the eyes and the nose, and we'll put a little shadow underneath the, the hat as well. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna be using black and white paint, and if I need to, I can go into my original skin color as well. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of black paint. I'm gonna give myself two tiny little adorable eyes so I think I'm gonna have mine go underneath my hat a little bit. So they're just black, they're just little dots. And if you make the right one smaller than the left one, it'll make it look more like he's turned a little bit. You don't want it too much smaller, but a little bit smaller would give a good illusion that his face is turned a little bit. Then I'm gonna use uh, that black paint on my brush and I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a shadow underneath this hat. So I don't have much paint on my brush and I suppose you could use a little bit of brown or a little bit of the original gray as well to get it to blend in a little bit, but it's all right if this is kind of a clean line underneath this hat, it's totally, that totally works. And I want it to, if you want it to have a little bit more um, depth or make it look like the hat is out a little bit more. You can pull that shadow down a little bit in some areas. And again, we'll be putting the, the hair and stuff on in a minute too, but this is just getting the, getting the party started with the, with the shadowy area here. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow underneath his nose. So again, I've got black paint on my brush. I want this to be underneath like this, so I'm gonna pull it all the way there and then I'm just gonna kind of rub it into that gray a little bit, the surrounding gray. I don't necessarily want it to be a firm, firm line, so if I need to, I can just pull, get some of that original gray and just blend it out a little bit, maybe, maybe a little darker. And then what I'm gonna do is I will wash and dry my little brush to finish the nose and the eye. So I've got my shadow there. So I'm just washing and drying my little brush and I'm gonna put two little white sparkle dots for the eyes. So I'm gonna put these down really close to the bottom of the, um, of the eyes, something like that. Then I'm gonna take that white paint and I'm gonna put a pretty big bright highlight towards the top side of the nose and then once I've got that on there, I'm picking up some of my original skin color to get it to fade out and get it to be go into a little bit darker along the edges. And if you wanted it even darker, you could add a little bit of brown to the combination and get the bottom side of the nose to be a little bit darker. I think I'm gonna do that too. Sorry, I didn't say I was gonna use brown, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I picked up a little bit of brown 
just to give this a little bit more oh yeah that that was the trick just get a little tiny bit of brown underneath there and now that nose pops are right out of his face and then let's see what are we going to do for the next step let's use our small brush for the next step so once you've got oh my god he's so cute once you've got your gnome nose on here you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing our candy cane stripes. I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna use a red paint. You may wanna do yours any way that you'd like. I'm gonna have a curve to mine, so it gives the illusion that this is a round object. We're gonna be adding other details that will, um, our highlight and our shadow that will tell the round story as well. But if you, you know, we start we start telling the story with these curved lines. So I know that mine are not perfectly equally spaced apart. You might have a much um, more symmetrical line than I have, but I'm just freeforming it. I'm just having some fun here. So you can have yours as, as similar to mine or as much as you'd like them to look like yours. And then as I go around this corner, this corner gets a little a little more complicated so I know that it should be in a similar way if the candy cane was out straight so I've got to kind of use my my imagination here to put them in the correct direction so oh my hands probably in the way sorry about that I think they should go something like this I might be right. I might not be right, but it's a candy cane. It can be made. It can be made in different ways, right? And then we're going to use this small brush for the next step. So once you've got your candy cane stripes on here, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So what I'm going to do for the next step is I'm going to finish my elf's face. So I'm going to use my small brush. I will be using white blue, black, red, and my skin color. So <laughs> how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna start with white. I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna put some white teeth on. So I'm gonna just color in this section with some white. And you know, I've got my little elf, like he's kind of happy, but he's kind of grimacing at the same time because he's trying to use all of his mighty, his mighty elf might to pull and gain gain control over this candy cane, but you can certainly change yours whatever way you want. I'm gonna color in the, the eyes with white paint as well. So this is gonna give me a nice base to add my other details onto the eyes. And of course, you can do yours in a different process if you want to, but this is, this is the way that I you know, I'm going to do this one because it's, it's a nice, easy building process. I'm not using thick paint for the white, though, because I do want it to kind of dry on the quicker side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a rosy cheek color. So I'm going to use some white and a touch of red. I want this to be like, he's so cold outside, <laughs> and I want to put some little rosy in his cheeks and on his nose and maybe on his chin too. So the trick here is I just made myself a, a, a pink and I'm not going to have a lot of paint on my brush and I'm going to put some on his nose. So I've got some pink on his nose and if you and if you start out and you're like oh that's not dark enough or that's not light enough just adjust it. So I'm going to add a little bit more red to mine because it almost looks a little too light. So I added a little bit more red and now it's more evident to me. So and I'm just kind of blending it into the skin color. I'm going to do the same thing on his cheek in through here. So I'm adding some some rosiness to his little cheek in through here and then I think I'm going to add a little bit on his chin too. So, you know, that just get that that feel of it being cool out there. And then if you need to, you can pick up some of your original skin color to make sure that it blends in. So you don't want any spot that is unpainted 
So just make sure when you do that rosiness that it does blend in with the skin next to it. So if you need to just pick up some of that original skin color and just get it to blend in. I'm gonna put a little tiny bright spot on the tip of his nose just to make it look like it's just being highlighted by the winter sunlight, so something like that. While the eyes are drying, I'm gonna go ahead and do the ear. So the ear, I'm really just gonna do maybe the skin color, maybe just a little bit of the pink in through here, just to kind of add a little, you know, dimension to it. I guess you could put a, a touch of white onto it if you wanted to, just so people can really see that cute little elf ear on there. Uh, and I think I'm pulling out so just a little bit more brown because this doesn't look like it's blending the way that I want. So I just added a touch of brown in through there. So now I'm gonna actually, I don't even know if I said I was gonna use brown, but I am gonna use brown because I need to put some um, teeth in there. So I have a little bit of brown on my brush and what I'm gonna do is I'm just making a line in the center of the teeth, something like that. And then I'm just gonna give myself a couple of vertical or diagonal kind of lines like that. And again, you could certainly do yours whatever way that you want. Now I'm going to add, I washed and dried my little brush. I'm gonna put a touch of black paint on my brush. This is gonna be the black part of the eyes. So I'm gonna have a pretty big part. It's gonna be maybe about half of the left-hand side of the eye is black. So I'm just coloring that in with some black paint. I will do the same on the other eye, but again, the other eye is kind of at a, a different angle, so you don't have to do, you know, you still wanna make sure that you've got a little bit of the white showing, because we're gonna be putting the blue on in a minute. So I've got that black section. I'm gonna wash and dry my little brush. And then I'm picking up blue and white at the same time on my brush. So I just have a little bit of blue and a little bit of white. Just make sure I've got enough of them both. This is gonna be the colored part of the eye. So I'm gonna add that to the right hand side of the black. And again, you could have yours as light or as dark. You can customize this. Maybe you want yours to have green eyes. I'm leaving a little bit of that white space to the right of it. So I've got some blue there, and then I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up a little bit of white paint, and I'm gonna add some sparkles to his eyes. So I like two sparkles, one, two, and then one, two, and that's all I'm gonna do to my cute little elf face. So we're gonna use the same brush for the next step so you can wash and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna paint some holiday bells on the end of my elf shirt. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I will be using brown, yellow, white, and black to do this. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a little bit of a golden color. So I'm gonna use yellow with a little bit of brown and a touch of white. And I'm just gonna spin it around, making myself like a dark golden color. And that's gonna be the base color for my my bells. And how I'm gonna do this is I am just going to use that color. It's almost like a, a mustardy kind of color. And I'm gonna put a little bit more white on this one just to make sure that it covers on that, on the red. So it's tough to, you need to have that white in there in order to give it good coverage. So if you don't have enough white, when you go onto those red parts, just add a touch more white into your mixture like I had to do. And then once I've got the bells on there, then what I'm gonna do is I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel. I'm gonna pick up a touch of black and I'm gonna give them a little shadow underneath them. So something like this. And I'm going bottom right, if you feel like you've put your light source somewhere else, you could certainly put your shadow somewhere else. So I've just got them all having a little bit of shadow underneath. Then I am going to wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put a little highlight on my bells. So I'm gonna use white and yellow on my brush at the same time. And I'm just gonna add a vibrant little highlight on all of my bills. 
I think I want it a little bit brighter than that. So a little bit more. A little bit more paint will, will do the trick. Yeah, there we go. Sometimes you just gotta adjust it a little bit to get what you're looking for. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So you can just wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing our shadow and highlight on our candy cane. So I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna be using brown and white paint. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna take my small brush, I'm gonna take brown paint, and first I'm going to put an outline on the bottom side of my candy cane with brown paint. So I'm just taking a little bit of brown paint and I am really just doing a outline at the bottom like this. I'm not really worried about blending it in at the moment. So I'm just going to make sure initially it's nice and dark. And then once I've got that sh the outline on there, I'll show you how I'm gonna blend it in. So I did that side. Now I'm gonna do the bottom side of this piece right here. So just a little outline coming up that right hand side a little bit. So now that I have that on there, I in essence kind of do it again. And when I do it the second time, I'm gonna rub it into the rest of the candy cane. So I'm going to redo it. And then I'm going to, with that wet brush, just kind of rub it, almost dry brush it up into the rest of the, the candy cane. And I don't use a lot of paint on my brush. If you feel that you went too much, that you used too much paint and the shadow went way too high up, then you can certainly back it off with a little bit of water. You can pick up a little bit of water and kind of scrub it off. But I like to go for it and have a good shadow. So I'm, I'm cool with it because it's gonna give it a lot of dimension. So I just picked up a good amount of brown. I'm gonna do this whole side in kind of one fell swoop or this whole section. So I'm adding my brown paint onto here and then I'm just gonna kind of lightly blend it with my brush as it's, as it's drying. That's in essence kind of what I'm doing. I'm blending it as it's drying up into the rest of the candy cane. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this bottom side. So I just reloaded my brush again with the brown. I'm gonna put it right back on that same original spot. And then I'm just kind of blending it up. And your paint may be thicker or thinner than mine, so it might react a little bit different than mine does. So it might take you a couple of tries to get this, but you know, you can always, beautiful part about acrylic is you can always paint over it, so. That's, that's a wonderful thing. And if you felt that you wanted to put a shadow underneath your elf's arm, you could certainly do that. If you felt that it really needs one underneath there, just pick up a little bit of brown. You can put it underneath there and the same would hold true to your gnome. You could certainly pick up a little bit of brown and put it right underneath that arm there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my small brush and I'm gonna put my highlight on. I'm gonna be doing it with white paint and I'm not gonna do it right at the edge. I'm gonna do it a little bit into the candy cane and I'm gonna put a white line on there and then I'm just gonna kind of blend it out. So it's gonna be right on top of the red and it's gonna add a highlight to make it, to make the illusion of it bending. So here we go. I'm taking a little bit of white paint. I'll do the big section first. I'll hit the little sections next. I'm gonna start over here. I'm gonna start a little away from the edge of my candy cane, and then I just start rubbing it out. So again, might take you a couple of tries to get it. Um, and if you need to redo your original lines, so be it. You can always just kind of slowly blend it into the shadow so the highlight actually goes into the shadow. And then I am going to do this little area over here. So I've got a little bit of white paint. I'm not at the edge. I'm a little bit away from the edge. And this just gives you the, uh, the illusion that it in fact is round. I think I wanna make this a little bit brighter in through here. Just give it a, give it a little more kick of that, of that highlighted area. 
And again, you can certainly play with the intensity of yours all on your own. And then on here, maybe I'll add this one in through this area in through here and then just get it to rub out and make it make sense with the rest of it. And then we are going to be working with our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadows and your highlights on your candy cane, you can wash and dry your big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are finishing the ground. We're gonna be putting our little footprints in the snow and we're gonna have them kicking up a little bit of snow as they're, as they're playing their tug of war. I'm using my big brush. I will be using white paint. I'll also be using whatever kind of gray paint that I have on my palette and maybe a little bit of blue. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with my shadowy kind of areas and then I'll build it to the bright snow. When I'm doing my shadowy areas, I don't need hardly any paint on my brush. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of whatever gray I have on my palette and maybe a teeny tiny bit of blue. And if I'm too scared that's too dark, I can also pick up a little bit of white paint. And if you think you have too much paint on your brush, you can always just tap it on your paper towel. You can always add more paint to the, to, the, to the canvas. It's tough to take it away once it's on there. So I'm gonna make it like there's a couple of little footprints and stuff out here. So I think I want a little bit more gray. That's a little bit too blue for me. So I just added a little bit more of my gray. So I've got little footprints maybe where he's coming from, maybe a little shadow underneath this foot and through here, maybe a little darker. So it looks more like a shadow. Maybe I've got a couple of little footprints that have come from the distance where they once were. And then maybe I've got, I need my gnome to have some little footprints and little scuffs in the snow. Maybe this one's got a little shadow right underneath there. Maybe a little black on my brush. Sorry, I didn't say I was gonna use black, but I just did. And then maybe I've got, the trick here again is very little bit of paint on your brush. I'm really just kind of hardly touching my, my canvas. I'm thinking footprints as I'm doing this. And once I've got some kind of semblance of those dark areas, I'm gonna use this same color to start my splash of snow or where they're kicking it up. So I want you to, I want this snow to look three dimensional. So I need to have some dark pieces in there. So this is gonna direct the eye to where this snow is traveling. So I'm gonna put these light or these thin dark little marks throughout this area where I, where I want it to look like the snow is kind of splashing up from their feet or they're kicking it up from their feet. And once I've got that in there, I'm actually gonna wash and dry my big brush. I don't need it super clean, but I wanna get some of those really dark colors off of there, and I'm gonna pick up white paint. So what I'm gonna do with the white paint now is I'm going to start building the fluffy snow. So I don't go in it really hard and heavy. I'm really consciously thinking of what I want this snow to do. So I want maybe this to look like he's kicked up a little bit of snow in through here and maybe it's going in front of his pants, something like that. Maybe there's little piles of snow that have, were created back here as they were walking or as they were tussling through the snow trying to trying to, you know, win the rights to the candy cane. So I'm just making sure that it it reads as if the snow has been tossed about while they were, you know, while they're trying to gain ownership of this cool candy piece. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. Maybe this one's got a little bit of snow kicked up over here. But you can see I'm not, I'm I'm going slow. I'm really not adding a ton of paint. I just want it to make sense and I don't want it to just look like streaks in the snow. I want this to look like, you know, it's little piles of snow here and there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get this snow to pop up from their feet. So I'm gonna go along 
the edges of where that dark stuff was that I just put and if I can't see it good enough then that means I'm like in through this middle area I might need to add a little bit more of the darkness but right now I'm just going to try and test it out with what I have and see if that works and if it doesn't work I can certainly modify it um, but I'm I'm thinking this is I'm thinking this is working pretty good so we I might maybe in through here maybe I'm going to add a little bit of the of the blue snow back into here just to tie it tie it with this snow down here that would help there we go that works and just add a little bit more white on top of it just so it doesn't look like I, it's just blue snow perfect yeah that's that's fun that looks like they're they're struggling for the for the candy cane and you can get it to come up in front of their their feet a little bit and we have a one more really fun step that I kind of saved for last because I think it's my favorite step so we're going to use our medium brush for the next step so you can just get that out and get ready okay so we're gonna make our gnome the cutest gnome in the whole wide world <laughs> we've got to finish his beard hair stuff so I'm gonna use my medium brush the colors I am using are white black and whatever gray that you would like or brown uh, so how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with black because I want to have some kind of distinct movement to this hair and the first place that I, I'm gonna start is in through here underneath his nose so I'm actually just gonna kind of put some a couple of little separating pieces going left to right so this way it adds uh, the movement of hair going that way and hair going this way and then I'm going to utilize the black and put a couple of little black streaks especially down towards the bottom I know that I put a little bit down as shadow earlier but I like my shadow so I'm going to put a couple more down in through here and then once I've got a couple of those black streaks on there then I'm going to start picking up my gray paint and the black is going to start to kind of work its way off of my brush and as soon as I feel it's almost off of my brush I'm going to start picking up white and white is where the magic is going to happen so once I start picking up white I can start to really direct these pieces and just make them look so full and so fluffy and I don't want it to all just look white so every now and again I'm going to pick up gray as well I want it to look like it's shadowed coming out from the hat so I don't want to pull too many white pieces up towards the top of the hat but I need there to look like there's hair coming out of there so I definitely want to bring some pieces down but again I don't want it to go too too light up there so utilize your gray even if you want to utilize a little bit of the black up coming out of the hat that would make sense so if you wanted a little bit of black to pull pull out down here you know underneath that hat that would totally make sense and then I'm just going to kind of keep switching colors until I feel like I have as much movement in this adorable little gnome so I think I'm a little biased <laughs> I'm like I think the elf might win but I think the gnome is so much cuter so I think I'm a little biased as to who I want to win this tug of war but you know maybe you have you have other feelings about this but <laughs> I just think he's the cutest little thing in the whole wide world so I'm just gonna I guess I'm casting my vote now that I um I want the gnome to win that's it I said it I took me to the end to decide but I guess since I'm I'm digging painting him so much with all of this cute little hair coming out that he has he's won me over the gnome has has won over the heart of the painter and that's it that's all she wrote so we have um, the final step to go which is the final step of any painting which is um, gonna happen with our little brush so once you've got your perfectly placed hair upon your adorable gnome you can get your small brush out and get ready for the final step 
Okay, well, we are on to the final step. This is the final step of any good painting or of any painting. It doesn't have to be good. It's just the final step. So I'm going to be signing it. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going to be using my small brush. I'm using black paint. I think I'm going to sign this one in the bottom left. I sign mine with my initials. You could certainly sign yours with your last name or your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you want. It's your identifying mark. You have fun with it. You sign or make your mark however you like. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself the most fun, festive fight of all times. <laughs> and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime. <laughs>